Hey everyone, how you doing? Welcome to another Surf Say So video. I hope you're all well. This is a requested video, so thank you so much for the request. And as you can tell from the title of this video, I'm going to be talking about an English indie group that started off as a trio, broke up, and then came back as a duo, and that is Dubstar. But before we get into the video, a very, very quick disclaimer. This video was purely done for entertainment, informational and commentary purposes. It's not to mock anyone. It's not to disrespect anyone. It's purely various informations I found on the interwebs put together into one easy to digest video. So we're going to keep it cute. We're going to keep it polite. We're going to keep it respectful. And let's get into the video. Formerly known as The Jones, Dubstar were initially a two-piece band consisting of Chris Wilkie playing guitar and Steve Hillier playing keyboards. In the summer of 1992, musician and performance artist Mark Greenwood played bass in The Jones for a number of gigs. In the autumn of 1992, Gavin Lee joined the group playing drums. He later played bass guitar before leaving the group to pursue a career at British Airways the following year, according to Wikipedia. Then in August 1993, Sarah Blackwood was invited to join the group after her boyfriend accidentally left a cassette tape of her singing in Steve Hillier's flat. In an interview on This Morning 1996, the group explained how they came together. You're, you're from Sarah, the, Chris and Sarah, Steve. Chris and Steve. How did yeah. you get together? Um, well, I was uh, DJing in Newcastle and uh, bumped into Chris, yeah. who uh, we'd like the same kind of music, and we did stuff that really wasn't of any worth for a while. <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> Honest of you. Yeah, well, And uh, then by chance came across a, a tape of Sarah, who yeah. was a, a friend of a mutual friend of ours. And, you, did, uh, you come from Newcastle? I come from Halifax, but I went to Newcastle to be at college. Oh, and, right. I, and I was just like basically pestering anybody that played an instrument in Newcastle, like, let me sing for you, let me sing for you. You want to sing? I'm you're not sing. from Newcastle either, you don't, you're not going to Newcastle. He's from London. Accent, no, yeah. I come from London, I come yeah. from a place called Bexley. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Which is, and where are you from? I'm from uh, Gateshead. <laughs> <laughs> at last, at last, <laughs> last. <laughs> we have a yeah. All right. So when one. was all that? When did you tie it then as a threesome? Oh, that would have been uh, towards the end of 93. So we've not really been around for very long. No, you haven't. Sarah replaced Steve on vocals in early 1994. The group later appointed record producer and talent manager Graham Robinson as their manager after he had seen them play in a club in Newcastle in March 1994. Graham renamed the band Dubstar and engaged the services of Pet Shop Boys and New Order producer Stephen Haig to co-produce a number of tracks for what would be the group's debut album Disgraceful. In the summer of 1994, Dubstar signed to Andy Ross's Food Records. Then in July 1995, Dubstar released their first single, Stars. Which beats at number 40 on the UK singles chart, spending a total of three weeks on the chart. In September 1995, the group released their second single, Anywhere. Which beats at number 37 on the UK singles chart, spending a total of three weeks on the chart. A month later, in October 1995, the group released their debut album, Disgraceful, which peaked at number 30 on the UK album chart, spending a total of 23 weeks on the chart. Then in January 1996, Dubstar released what would be their breakthrough hit, Not So Manic Now. Not so near the tower block, I'm not so manic now which peaked at number 19 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of five weeks on the chart. In their interview on This Morning in 1996, it was revealed that the meaning behind the single, Not So Manic Now, was about an old age pensioner, aka an OAP, trapped in a block of flats. The, the, the record, Not So Manic Now, it's, it's about an OAP trapped in a tower block of flats. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it's not very often you get tales of um, domestic violence in pop music, okay. but... Uh, that's well, we'll where we are today. Well, we'll in March 1996, the group re-released their first single, Stars. But this time, the single peaked at number 15 on the UK single chart, spending a total of six weeks on the chart. Then in August 1996, Dubstar released another single titled Elevator Song. Which peaked at number 25 on the UK single chart, spent a total of two weeks on the chart. In June 1997, the group performed their single Stars at Glastonbury. We'll take our hearts to the side, leave our lives behind, and watch the stars go out. And in July 1997, Dubstar released what would be the lead single from their second album, No More Talk.
which peaked at number 20 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of three weeks on the chart. Then in September 1997, the group released what would be their second single from the album, Cathedral Park. which peaked at number 41 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of two weeks on the chart. Also in September 1997, Dubstar released their second album, Goodbye, which peaked at number 18 on the UK albums chart, spent a total of two weeks on the chart. The group's debut album over in the US, also called Goodbye, was released on Polydor Records in 1998 and combined tracks from both their first and second albums. Also in 1998, the group released another single titled I Will Be Your Girlfriend. I will which peaked at number 28 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of two weeks on the chart. After about over a year out of the spotlight, the group returned in the year 2000 and released what would be their lead single from their upcoming third album, I, Friday Night. Which peaked at number 37 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of two weeks on the chart. Also in the year 2000, the group released their third album, Make It Better. However, the album did not make it onto the UK albums chart and band member Steve quit the group before the album's release. According to Steve via his website, stevehillier.net, he cited professional difficulties with Sarah as being the reason for the band's split. However, in an August 2003 article in The Guardian, it was stated that the reason why the group split was because record label Food was swallowed up by EMI. In 2002, vocalist Sarah Blackwood was recruited by ex-Fraser Chorus member Kate Holmes to join her duo Technique. Shortly afterwards, Kate and Sarah decided to write together and formed a new anonymous electro-pop act, Client, with the ladies being referred to as Client A and Client B. The duo released three singles, In It For The Money, which beats at number 51 on the UK single chart, spent a total of two weeks on the chart. Radio, which peaked at number 68 on the UK singles chart, spending a total of one week on the chart. And their biggest hit to date, Pornography. Which peaked at number 22 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of two weeks on the chart. In 2004, record label EMI released a Best of Dubstar compilation album titled Stars, The Best of Dubstar. The band reformed in 2006 to 2008 and in 2008 there were posts on the group's official MySpace page which stated that the recording of Dubstar's fourth album was underway. However, in November 2008 the group made a Facebook post stating that vocalist Sarah would not participate and the future of their fourth album was up in the air. However, Sarah and Chris did work together in the interim as Sarah's debut solo album, Acoustic at the Club Bar and Dinan, features Chris on guitar. On the 12th of April 2010, the band released a cover version of I'm in Love with a German Film Star for an Amnesty International project. In December 2010, it was announced that Sarah had left Client and a new member was being recruited to front the band. The band reformed again in 2010 to 2013 and during this period, Steve wrote, recorded and produced two unreleased Dubstar albums, including a cover of Bob Mould's If I Can't Change Your Mind. But if I can't change your mind, then no one will. In 2012, the group released their first new material since the 90s, which was a tone poem titled Circle Turns for Record Store Day. Also in 2012, the group played a special gig at the Clooney in Newcastle. In April 2013, Dubstar played their sold-out comeback gig at the Lexington in London, previewing three new songs that were completed for the unreleased new album, Windowpane, Superstar and In The End. And in the summer of 2013, the group performed their final gig that year, supporting the band Human League in Tynemouth. On the 1st of June 2018, Dubstar, now consisting of Sarah and Chris, released a new single titled What's Number 9. Number 9 comes at you like a punch, it couldn't care less. It In September 2018, Dubstar released a music video for their track titled Love Comes Late. Love Comes Late. 
October 2018, they released their album One. Steve had no involvement in the album. On the 27th of August 2020, Dubstar released a track titled Hygiene Strip. The music video was released on the same day. Here on the hygiene strip, sun setting on the hotel. Then late in 2020, the duo released the single I Can See You Outside, which was recorded at the end of the UK's first C19 lockdown and which was co-produced with Stephen Haig. In October 2020, the duo recorded and released an acoustic version of their hit single Not So Manic Now to celebrate the 25th birthday of their debut album, Disgraceful. The duo opened the Dubstar store on their website, dubstarofficial.co, selling and shipping limited edition coloured vinyl 12 inch singles of I Can See You Outside and Hygiene Strip, a limited edition coloured vinyl 7 inch of acoustic recordings of Not So Manic Now and Free As A Bird, and a repress of their most recent album One on vinyl and CD as well as t-shirts. As of 2021 and according to their website at the time of this recording, Dubstar state that there's a lot more new music coming and they are working on a plan for their back catalogue as well as working on releasing more of their older music in the USA and Canada. Dubstar are currently active on Twitter and quite active on Facebook. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you've all enjoyed. Don't forget to like the video, share the video, subscribe, comment down below. And again, thank you so much for the request. And I'll see you all in my next video. Over and out.